Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joanna and I am a third year medical student in New York City. So I apologize for being away for so long. I am still working on this consistency thingy, but I am trying to be more consistent. In today's video, it is a requested video, so thank you for people for still watching and requesting videos. I'm going to give a few tips for interviewing for competitive universities. There are a lot of tips for interviewing already online and in the internet, um, YouTube, all that stuff. So I'm going to link a few articles and stuff that I find helpful so that I'm not redundant. This is just going to be solely based off of my experience. When I was interviewing for schools, um, my senior year of high school, I was like 16, 17. So here are my tips. I didn't really number them so i will number them afterwards the first tip is to prepare yourself prepare your outfits when i was a senior in high school i had one interviewing dress it was this dress it's um it's white on the top it had some navy stripes if you follow my official instagram i'll put it here somewhere because i don't know my <laughs> name off the top of my head because i'm dumb but if you follow my official instagram you will have seen that dress because i actually wore it to a conference in arizona but that was my official interviewing dress in high school it made everything so much easier i did not have to think about outfits i did not have to think about if it fit and i didn't have to worry i do think that you should go out there and find a really nice modest it wants to come up if you're a bustier girl like me you want it to really cover everything you want it to be either at the knees or a little bit below the knees i really personally love midi dresses so that's like midway between your um midway between your knee and your ankle midi dresses I love that aesthetic, so that's why I really like this dress. But if you do not like that aesthetic, I just say at your knees are a little bit longer. You want to be very appropriate. Um, uh, universities and like more of the um, science law type programs that you're applying to, you want to be more modest. You want to stick to tans and navy blues. I would stay stay away from I would say stay away from black because black is a bit of a morbid color since it's frequently associated with like death and funerals. Um in certain cultures, I know in other cultures you would wear like red or you'd wear white, but um over here black is really associated with funerals. So I would try to stay away from black, but you can wear black um as well. But I would look more for the tans the browns and the navies those are very good um very official colors so mine was navy blue and it was really nice pick an outfit have that one outfit maybe have to make sure it fits very well if you are adjusting it if you're pulling up the top if you're pulling down the skirt it doesn't fit do not wear it but yes i say have one or two outfits and just wear that it takes so much pressure off also shoes so you can wear flats you can wear like ballet flats I would say opt for kitten heels. One to two inch heels. They're very comfy and they're very professional and mature. So if you're more comfortable in flats, I say go for flats. But if not, I say go for the kitten heels. You're not wearing stilettos. You're not wearing three, four inch heels. No, do not do that. Kitten heels. It's the way to go. I have a whole bunch of like very professional kitten heels in navy and in... um black that i took from my mom a lot of stuff came from my mom but yeah if you are a boy it's much easier for you go to a place like men's warehouse or go to like jc penny or something and get a very nicely fitted suit very nicely tailored it doesn't have to be anything too expensive you could even rent a suit if you want you can go and ask um you can go and ask uh older brothers siblings cousins your uncle your dad just get a suit that fits very well um and you can wear that 
include a tie, look very put together, look very mature, um, but make sure it fits very well. Because if you have a suit that is too big, it does give off a very childish look. Um, so make sure it fits very well. It doesn't cost much to go to a tailor or it'd be a great time to lo learn how to sew and kind of tailor it yourself. But yes, and try and get a very nice professional pair of shoes. Please do not wear sneakers. The reason why I am really honing in the point of what to wear for your interviews is because I have seen because I was like a part of not a part of the interviewing process but I would go and talk to the students who are interviewing at my school and I would see some of the girls sometimes they'd be adjusting their clothes or they're trying to like cover their bust pulling down their skirt or they would wear really high heels that they're not as comfortable walking in you don't want to look uncomfortable. You want to be very comfortable there. So don't wear anything like that. Or once I even saw a boy who came to the interview in like a sweatshirt from his, he like left school early to come. He was in a sweatshirt and jeans. Please do not do that. This is very important. And this is kind of like your step into adulthood and you're set into the business world and presenting yourself um, in all facets of life as a young professional. So you really want to dress well for it. So that's my first tip. Find one or two outfits that are your interviewing outfits and have them ready for your interviews. Done. Tip number one. Tip number two. If you are an anxious person, I wasn't that anxious in high school. I didn't really develop anxiety until college, which is very strange. But if you are an anxious person or just anyone in general, because you do want to be well prepared, look into some interviewing questions. You can look them up online, print them off and either practice answering questions in the mirror or have a friend, a sibling, a parent, someone ask you questions and you work on your responses. The more times you have answering these questions, the better you are at it. And there's a lot of very common questions that they ask, like, where do you see yourself in the future? Best and worst qualities about yourself, things like that. Really practice those ones because I know a lot of people, even myself, we kind of feel uncomfortable speaking about ourselves. You need to develop comfort there. So you can work on those questions, with someone else or just in your mirror, it helps a lot. Or what I like to do is develop like an elevator speech about yourself because that helps in breaking the ice because they're always gonna ask you, tell me about yourself. And if you have down pack an elevator speech, like one, one and a half minutes about yourself, it's perfect. You can just repeat that during the interview and you will feel much more at ease because you've practiced all this already. You're not kind of going off the dome. That being said, another thing I actually learned when I was applying for a job my first year of college, my interviewer said at the end of an interview, when they ask you if you have questions, always try to ask a question. This is very important. It kind of shows interest and it shows that you're very involved and you're very proactive. I used to be a type of person that I would never ask questions. And after I applied for that job, I did get it by the way, but after I applied for that job and my boss told me that I said, okay, from now on, I really have to make sure that I have questions when I go for any type of interviews. So there are certain questions that are very good to ask. You can ask about the community, you can ask, um, like end up at the university, this is for schools. You can ask about the communities, you can ask about um, different opportunities. You can ask about if it's like a PWI or if it's um, a school where there's not as much diversity as let's say my institution you can ask what resources there are for diverse students that's a very good question um you can also ask about any academic resources things like that or leadership opportunities there's there's a lot of questions that you can ask i'll try and list some really good ones in the description box below for applying to universities but it's always important to have one question at the end and it can really impress your interviewer so that's good. So we've gone to three tips or two tips. I don't even know. The next tip is to research the institution you are interviewing at. I cannot tell you how many of my friends have told me, oh, I didn't even know about the school when I went to interview. No, 
because not everyone is going to be as lucky where they get into the school and they didn't know anything about it at the interview. I made sure that I researched every institution I was applying for and had reasons as to why I wanted to apply there. It could have been something so simple as I remember there was one institution I applied for specifically because of the courses they had in their African studies department. Even something like that. I had I made sure that I had a reason why every school was on my list. And then I researched the school again before I went for my interviews. So really make sure you know about the institution before you go to your interviews. And this also really helps when you're writing essays. Try and personalize, especially your supplemental essays, for institutions. So yes, research the school before you get there for the interview because a lot of times they're going to ask you why this school and I want you to really say why this school because you know about the institution. So yes, that's another tip. Some other tips for interviewing, you want to make sure that you reduce This is just like a phonetic thing. This is just something that I picked up as I did more public speaking in college and medical school. Try to reduce, and I know I do it a lot in my videos too, so I'm kind of a hypocrite. Reduce words like, um, uh, like. Reduce those words. Because they're not bad, and a lot of people do use them, but if you try and reduce it, it makes you come off as more of a seasoned and professional speaker, and it looks really good on you if you're able to reduce those words. And it can be very difficult, especially if like English is not your first language, or if you're a more shy and nervous person, but that's why I said before, it's great to practice in the mirror and to kind of catch yourself, or practice with a partner, and to kind of catch yourself when you say those things. Don't be hard on yourself if you still say things like that or if you still catch those things yourself. Just be aware of it and try and reduce it. Also look for kind of tics that you might have or things that you might do when you're nervous. So one thing that I used to do a lot during interviews is I would play with my hands a lot. Um, or sometimes because I used to tap dance when I was a kid, I used to tap my feet a lot. Try to reduce those things. And these things are reduced with more practice. So kind of learn your thing. Some people it's the hands, some people it's the feet. Some people will play with their hair a lot. Um, try and learn what that thing is for you. Notice it, reduce it. You want to make sure you're putting your very best foot forward. So... Another tip, when you're going to your interviews, you can just go with yourself. You are applying for a school or university and normally they have all the information for you, uh, about you when you get there, but it does not hurt you. It only helps you if you have a little portfolio that you go to interviews with. What is in this portfolio, you might ask? Well, you're going to have the essays you wrote for that school. You could just review it to know what things you spoke about. You can have your resume. It's a very important thing to have in there. And if you do have, you can have little business cards. I know some schools um, or some programs have you make little business cards about yourself. You can have that. I don't think you should. You need that. But always have the essays for that specific school you're applying to and your resume if you want to carry a little portfolio. You don't have to by all means, but if you want, you can have that. And also carry something to keep you occupied during the waiting period because normally you want to get there early. That's my next tip. Make sure you get there early. If your interview starts at 7, your goal is to get there at 6.45, so get there at 6.30. Wow, that's unrealistic. No one's going to have an interview at 7 in the morning. But yes, if your interview is like, let's say 1 p.m., your goal, like your late goal is 1245. So your actual goal is 1230. And you want to get there early. You want to prevent for anything that might keep you from that getting to that interview on time. Because let's say if you're commuting, like my parents drove me to all my interviews, which again, because I remember I had one interview in the middle of Manhattan And I was running late for that because of all the traffic. You want to make sure that you are allotting time to get to your interview 30 minutes early so that you have time to calm yourself, drink some water, go to the bathroom, give yourself a pep talk. You don't want to be getting there 10, 15, like 
five, 10 minutes before your interview starts. That's just shooting yourself in the foot. So make sure that you get there early, at least 30 minutes is what I say, but not too early. You don't want to sit there like two hours before your interview and just be looking at everyone. That's also a bit awkward. Early as in 30 minutes. Aim for 30 minutes before your interview. And so in your little portfolio that you take, if you want to, bring something to keep you occupied. So you can bring your essays to really look over it. I used to bring a book so I can read. It's okay to talk to the other applicants, the other interviewing people, interviewees are they called, but sometimes that would make me a little anxious because I had an issue where I would compare myself to others a lot. And so whenever I would get anxious, I would just pull out my book and read to calm myself down. So I suggest you always bring something to calm yourself down. It can be a book. It could be some headphones for your phone. I think you should stay off your phone. So that's why I would opt for a book or a little journal or sketchbook to write or draw just to keep yourself calm. So. Those are all the tips I have right now for interviewing. I'm sorry if this seems like a bit of a rush or a bit unscripted. I just really want to get this out there about my own experience. I will link some articles to some very useful tips, but yes, so these are all my tips for now. Good luck on your interview, guys. I will have another interview video or rather i'm gonna make it a series i'm gonna make this a series of three or four videos so i'm gonna include the outfits idea i'm gonna include a makeup video for the ladies who want to wear makeup you do not have to wear makeup you probably shouldn't wear makeup but if you do want to wear makeup because i wore makeup for all my interviews i will show you some ideas on what to do so yes thank you for watching my video thank you for continuing to support me even though i'm probably the least consistent youtuber ever but i will see you all in the next video please take care of yourselves be safe and good luck i want the best for everyone bye guys